in this section, we're going to talk about dealing with choice values and status and status reasons. These kinds of fields in Dataverse are special in that they're tied to a, a drop-down list, typically. And those drop-downs represent show the view of the text that the user is going to select from. But when the user selects them, what's stored in the database is actually a numeric value associated with that. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. It allows for multi-language support. It also is a much more efficient way of storing that data. But when you get to the point where you need to report off of it, you need to go back and find those labels. And that's what we're going to talk about how to do today. So in this case, I've got a view that's got a few uh, op choice values, uh, industry, travel types, status and status reasons. If I look at the record, I can see that as, as I choose an industry, I can select a new industry and I'm selecting the text value, but behind the scenes it is storing a numeric value. Same here. The status and status reason are, are the same kind of idea. Um, and those are all being stored in the database as such. But if I take that value and run a query off of it, like in this case, I've taken those fields and run the query off of it, and let's execute the query, you'll see that the results come back with just that numeric value. Now, what I, I can do is then join this result with these global option sets or the option set metadata, these metadata tables uh, that are provided. And if I look at the state metadata or the status metadata, uh, very similar things we can see in them in that they are a list of the entity names, uh, pro option set values, as well as the value themselves. So whatever I pull that list down and choose, um, and then there's the, the localized label associated with it, as well as a language code. Now, this language and culture code uh, for U.S. English is 1033. Your environment, if you're set up on something other than U.S. English, it's going to be a different value. Uh, you'll just look in your environment and you can see what that value is. But you're going to need those four values in order to return this localized label. That's what we want to show to the user. Now, I've already gone ahead and joined uh, this query and joined out the, uh, the four different fields that are represented here. Uh, as choice lists, and I'm going to join those to the corresponding metadata. And I'll talk about what those are. You might want to pause if you want to see this more carefully, but the state code and status code are very similar to each other. It's just that they go against a state or a status metadata uh, table or view. And then the option set, in this case, this one is created with a table specific option set, and that's kind of the old style, uh, but that has a value that's associated with just that table. In this case, it's joined with a global option set. So whatever the field is on the form, it's pointing to a common uh, pick list that's stored that's available to any entity uh, in the organization or any in, in that, uh, that tenant. So there are slightly different ways in which you get to those, but I'll show you a little bit about that. Once you've joined these, you can then click Execute and you'll see the results come back with the, uh, the values associated, the, 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 the labels that we need, uh, that the user would be expecting to see that. Once I have this, I can take this whole query, I'll grab that and hit Control C, and I can go back to Power BI. I'm gonna modify this slightly. I'm gonna take this portion and get rid of it, and go ahead and change this to in source. Yep. And right in this section, right before the, well, I'm going to add a comma, start a new line, and open the query equals, and put the double quotes there, and make some space there. And then I'm going to paste that query that I just grabbed and paste it in. This way, it's going to run this query uh, just as I've written it, and it's going to send that to SQL. So I'll click Done, and it's going to do a couple of things. First off, it does need to ask my, my permission to run it since it's a native query. And then, uh, of course, yes, that's, a, that's true. I'm going to do that. And now when I get the results back, I can see the labels associated with it. So that's we're in good shape there. A um, couple of things to point out, some, some ideas that might be useful to you, is in the case where I'm looking at a form, and I might not know couple things, the, 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 the field names that are associated with these. There is a utility that's been provided by the community that's called Level Up for Dynamics 365. It's an add-in for Chrome or Edge. And if I click the logical names, 
What it's doing is it's showing me those field names associated with the fields that are on form. That's often useful because sometimes the field on the form is relabeled slightly. So just to make sure you're using the right, getting the right lookup, that's really useful there. Another item is if I go to the, the uh, Power App uh, Maker portal and I go into the account record and go to the industry, for instance, I'll click on industry and edit the column. I can see that this is not synced with a global choice. That's, a, that's one of those local tables. And I can see the values that are here. But if I look at separately, let me just go back to a different one. Let's go to the travel charge and choose this one and look down here and see that it is synced with a global choice and it's synced with the travel charge type global choice. Uh, so that's a really useful to uh, be able to see what it's synced with and what the schema name is and what the logical name is. We have all that information for you. Now you've got everything you need in order to join the text strings with those option sets, uh, choice labels in the value and return those and you're off and running. Thanks and I look forward to seeing you again and I look forward to hearing from you as to what you're doing with this and leave some comments down below and tell me more about what you're doing with Dataverse and the Azure Synapse link with Power BI.